Hey, I'm Lindsay Sterling, and you're watching the AU Review. Welcome back to Australia, or to Sydney in particular. Yes, I am super excited to be back here. Last time we were here, we had a couple days off actually in Sydney that we got to roam around and we got to go over to the Opera House and do some shopping. So it feels good to be back. It's good to have you back. You know, what are your memories of, of those shows last time? You played the Metro Theatre last time. You've got a venue upgrade to the Enmore <laughs> this time. You're, you're moving up in Australia. Yes. It's exciting and moving up in the world as a performer um, but I remember specifically our show in Sydney I think was the last day like the last show of a really long run of tours mm. and that was like the last one before I w went to go write a new album and I just remember after we played that show in Sydney we were all like what a way to end like it was perfect the, f the crowd was excited they were loud they were smiling like they were dancing with us and I mean it's made me ever since be like I can't wait to come back to Australia and I'm not just saying that because I'm here but genuinely a lot of times in interviews when I get asked where are you most excited to go back to I mean I was really ex I'm genuinely excited to come back here and it feels good that Finally, I'm here. <laughs> and you're back I'm with back. a new album and everything. Yeah, coming back in style with, uh, with Shatter Me, the new, the new album. <laughs> and now, it's been out for a little while, so, you know, in theory, fans have had quite a long time to sit down and, and get, to, get to know the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's um, gosh, how long has it been out now? Everybody's already starting to ask when my next album's coming <laughs> out. And I feel like I just, I'm like, I just barely released the last album. And you um, haven't stopped since it came out. I think that's why it feels like I just barely released it, because yeah. we've been touring pretty nonstop since I released it. I mean, I've realized uh, people sometimes say the world gets smaller the more you travel. I think it gets bigger. <laughs> I realize that hitting, you know, trying to hit all the different markets of the world and meet all my different fans in every market and of, in every corner of the planet, this is a big place. It takes a while. <laughs> Here we are, you know, you know, Get, getting close to a year later and I'm still, you know, we haven't even hit South America yet. Is that on the agenda? It is. After this, we go home for a couple weeks, about two and a half weeks, and then we, we head down to South America. And then we've officially touched most of the world. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's one way to see the world in any case. And you, it, it, as you mentioned off camera, you know, it's almost, almost on a plane every day, though, is the only, yeah. the only downside. Lots of flying. I've gotten really good at the, you know, at the security lines. Mm. I'm, I'm pro, a pro security line attendee. Um, but uh, it is, it is interesting. You do see a lot of venues, a lot of different hotels. Everybody thinks you have this grand life of getting to literally see the corners of the world. Um, but I will say we do try really hard. You know, our, 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 my band and our crew. Whenever we do have a day off, we go out and we explore. Mm. Whether it's shopping, going to the beaches holding a koala, you know, whatever we can do to try to feel authentic in whatever place we're at, we try to experience it. And it's, uh, and it has made it quite the adventure to, as we've toured. When you're doing so much of that, you, you're feeling like, you know, you've got to go see the world, you've got to go out and about. Is it hard to kind of keep on top of other things, you know, keeping up with friends and family and even your fans through, you know, your many social media uh, enterprises. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a balance, you know, and of course we do take, you know, sometimes I'll take a day of just like today, I'm going to practice my violin, I'm going to, you know, because there's so many other things that go along with being a musician than just doing the show. You have to mm. keep you have to keep up your craft, um, you have to keep up your social media, keep, you know, yeah, I'm visiting fans here in Australia, but, you know, you can't avoid or um, ignore your mm. fans around the world. So, you know, it, it is quite a balance. And of course, trying to maintain any sort of a, a social life at home while you're constantly away is uh, something I'm still learning how to better do. But um, I will say, luckily, I love the people I tour with. And so it's, it's nice to be with my, my, my favorite people, you know, here, aside from my family, mom and dad, you're the <laughs> best, you know, but aside from my, my straight up family, there's pretty much no one else I'd rather spend my time with than, than these guys and uh, that's a good thing because we're together a lot. <laughs> yes, indeed. So it's got to be, it's got to feel like a good family if, uh, yeah. if, if not, it makes it very tough. It, I mean, oh gosh, it would be miserable. I did tour once as a violin player for a band that, um, you know, not that we didn't get along, we just didn't have anything in common mm. and I remember it was such a, oh, it was such a grind, it was such a job and I was like, music is not supposed to feel like this. <laughs> and so it's made me all the more so appreciate now that I have such a wonderful group that feels like a family, because I know that it doesn't always work that way. And looking back to your time of making Shatter Me, obviously 
being in the studio, a very different experience of life on the road, but you worked with a lot of different people throughout that process, a lot of different producers. Robert Zalong, who's a good friend of the sites, and, and, yeah. and uh, many other amazing producers. You know, uh, in particular, working with Robert, you know, what was that experience like? Because that was, that was pretty new for him to step into the producing yeah. side of things when it wasn't his own music. Yeah, it was really it was really exciting to work with Robert um, because he we took a little bit of a different approach on the songs I did with him. My album was almost wrapped up, and mm. so I was like, you know what? I feel like I've got kind of my my safe songs, my safety net. Mm. I was like, let's try. You know, we were kind of excited to try some different things, and um, so we took a really different approach. You know, with lots of layering of violins and putting effects on violins, everything mm. from you know octaving it up. And the reason it was so fun doing this with Robert is because that's his style. That's mm. what he does. Like his live shows. If you have seen a Robert DeLong show are amazing he's you know turning all of his voices and little instrumentation on stage you know into all these different effects and um, so doing his style but paired with a violin was really fun and there's no one that works harder on stage than him with the Wii remote jumping between the, all the drum kits um, how do you then recreate that live you know how does how does the music that is quite laid and and, mm -hmm. and at times quite experimental on the record how does that then translate onto the onto the live stage well I must say I have a very different style of performing than Robert I've actually haven't ever toyed with the uh, the live looping and mm. that kind of thing that's a whole different ballpark which I do want to try doing on my next next tour um, I'm a very very much so more a dancer and a you know I basically run around the stage and the thought of being tied to a board you know makes me almost <laughs> feel claustrophobic on, as a performer because I'm yeah I'm a very very fluid in my movements and and jumping around doing back bends twirling and um, that's the Lindsay Sterling show that uh, people will see when they come so fans who enjoyed you last time they're in for a similar treat uh, on this tour I think so. Um, definitely new songs, new music. I feel I've gotten better. I keep getting better. That's a good thing. I look back at videos from like a year ago and mm. I'm like, oh dang, I have improved. All this, all this touring and doing <laughs> shows is paying off. But, um, but yeah, so it'll be, it'll be exciting. And it, it, I can't believe it's been like a year and a half since we were last here. So like I said, good to be back. And uh, the rest of the year? Other than uh, you, you mentioned South America, anything else in store that's, uh, that we should plug? Ooh, um, I have a book that I'm working on right now. Really? It'll be coming out, hopefully, fingers crossed, we found a publisher for it, and uh, hopefully it's going to be in the fall. And then um, I'm going to also spend the fall working on, yet again, another album. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is time. Would you approach it in a similar way, or would you, would you shatter yourself again and go in a different, different direction? You know, that's the big question. I think... Uh, you know, you always want to be evolving in your sound mm. and your style and your art, and you never want to come out with like just a rehash of the same thing. It's just different chord progressions and melodies. Like, no, I, I want to push myself. Mm. I'm not sure exactly what that means yet. And I think same with my last album. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do it, but it's almost like as you try new things, um, the album almost took on a life of its own, and I'm, I'm hoping that happens this time again. Fantastic. Well, Lindsay, great to have you back in Australia. Thank ah. you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.